we're having a base plate here or the cast so we start with the wax sheet folding heating folding the wax sheet into a wax occlusion rim now the sheet is folded we start by placing the folded sheet onto the base plate This is approximately the place it should go. It should cover the wax should cover the labial surfaces, the labial surfaces of the base plate. It should look it should look something like this. Inside the patient's mouth. If it was offering um, little lip support, we press the wax occlusion rim so that it will give us uh, more support. If it is, if it is offering. Um, little bit um, too much lip support we can press the lips and cheeks uh, inside to reduce the amount of lip support now now I will end it I will end it I will end it at the lip line parallel to the interpupillary line you can adjust um, the inclination of the occlusal plane at this stage because the wax is still very soft. Here, posteriorly, I'll adjust it a little. I'll press a little bit posteriorly so that the uh, tongue depressors are parallel to each other. So the wax occlusion rim becomes parallel to the allotragus line posteriorly. Sometimes it helps uh, if you wet the tongue depressors. Here, posteriorly, perhaps we need a little bit pressure posteriorly to obtain parallelism between the tongue depressors. If the stomach helps. Looks good, but I'll press a little bit here so that it becomes symmetrical around the midline. Also, little bit here, little bit here, and I'll reach it the <coughs> lip support again. there was any anything wrong with the level of the occlusal plane I can adjust it now because the wax occlusion rim is still very soft I make sure again it is parallel to the allotragus line posteriorly and the interpupillary line anteriorly should make sure that the wax occlusion rim doesn't stick to the or the tongue depressor doesn't stick to the wax occlusion rim Now it is parallel. Okay, خلاص. The wax occlusion rim is well adjusted now. We need to open indices, V-shaped retention grooves posteriorly. And we coat it with little bit of petroleum jelly. We'll coat it with a little bit of petroleum jelly. Yes. I'll allow it to set now under cold water. 
transfer it to the patient's mouth again. Identify midline, the midline of the face. and probably canine lines. Canine lines are the lines that go uh, at the sides of the nose, just like this. Okay, so this is bit line. And these are canine lines. <coughs> now the upper bite block is well adjusted with um, the retention grooves posteriorly. We'll leave it aside. Yeah. Use a little bit of petroleum jelly to coat those grooves. Then we start, we start folding the other half of the sheet. Make sure that the wax doesn't drip. You don't heat, heat it enough so that the wax drips off the sheet. We need to have all the wax. to construct the lower wax occlusion rim. Yes. Now, it is well heated. The wax is well heated. The wax sheet, we put it, we place it over the lower base plate. We place it so that it covers a little bit labially. Uh, we place it over the crest of the um, ridge or the base plate, really. And it is a little bit plate labially. It is very soft now. We put it inside the patient's mouth and allow the patient to bite over it until he reaches, reaches the vertical dimension, the intended vertical dimension at occlusion. We placed two dots, two dots at the nose and at the chin to start measuring the vertical dimension at occlusion. Over one tongue depressor, we place the dots at the bottom that corresponds to the one at the chin. We let the patient stand at the vertical dimension at rest and put a mark against the dot over the nose. This is the vertical dimension at rest. This is at rest. At occlusion should be about two to three to three millimeters shorter, less. So this corresponds to something like this. So between here and there, this is the vertical dimension at rest. And between this dot and the bottom, this is the vertical dimension at occlusion. If the wax occlusion rim, or either the wax occlusion rim in the upper or the lower becomes hard, you can place it in hot water intermittently so that it becomes soft again. But you should make sure that the wax doesn't melt. Should only heat the wax without melting. Now we'll transfer it inside the patient's mouth and allow the patient to bite over them. Now we've placed the upper and lower inside the patient's mouth. We make sure the patient is in centric relation. Get the shui shui. Get the shui shui. Shui shui. شفايفك يا بعض قفل اكثر قفل اكثر 
شد اكثر شوي شد شد خلاص لا شد كمان شوي كمان 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 خلاص كمان شوي كمان كمان قفل شفايفك على بعض خلاص خلاص This is we've reached now the vertical dimension at occlusion we ask the patient not to press not to keep the pressure just to keep the jaws together without applying pressure over them from inside the wax looks like this horizontally it is it has flown beyond the upper wax occlusion rim you can you can shape it by applying a little bit of finger pressure over the wax just like this you should indicate to the technician the amount of overbite and overjet you want to include in your setup and this is the appropriate horizontal relationship between the upper and lower wax occlusion rims thickness it exhibited more thickness at the peripheries of the lower base plate we remove the excess wax excess wax should be removed excess wax should be removed with the wax knife and you can also shape the horizontal relationship to the level you want to reflect a class one relationship between the upper and lower should make sure that upper and lower well, bite blocks they are separable they are separable and you can join them easily together this is a positive relationship I will not remove the wax inside it also stabilizes the relationship between the upper and lower however I'm going to cut the wax a little bit more to indicate more overlap between the upper and lower wax occlusion rims This is a class one relationship indicating to the technician the sort of occlusion we want them to build in the wax in the tooth setup. Now we should make sure there is no contact between the model and the bite blocks posteriorly the models and the bite blocks posteriorly there is a space here there is a space here no contact well probably there is a little bit of a contact here between the wax and the opposing casts we remove the wax and make sure there is no contact there shouldn't be any contact really there is a contact probably so I'll carve I'll carve 
that part of the model that interferes. with the opposing vital block. Centric jaw relation record, just to make sure that this is the midline. These are canine lines, extend them to the lower. And we should uh, select artificial teeth now.